It was no doubt a sad weekend considering the unexpected loss of America's dad, Bob Saget. The 65-year-old actor was found dead in his hotel room in Orlando, Florida, an event that nobody saw coming. It was a heartbreaking and confusing conclusion to the life of a man whose career had meant so much to so many. I mean, just ask any young adult who grew up in the 90s this simple question. Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the paperboy, evening TV. And watch as their whole face lights up. While we best know Bob is living in that San Francisco home from the iconic Full House series, in reality, he long lived in a $2.9 million estate in LA. For an entire generation, Full House was practically inescapable, and Bob Saget's performance as Danny Tanner was a huge reason why. Whether he was cracking a joke or pulling on our heartstrings, few actors could match Bob when he was being his heartwarming best. That's kind of ironic when you consider the man was also well known for telling a 7 minute long version of the aristocrat joke. It could get pretty inappropriate. But Full House would take care of Bob just as well as he took care of it. After premiering in 1987, by 1990, the series afforded him the opportunity to buy his first home. At the time, he and his then wife paid $2.5 million for the house, which was located in LA's Pacific Palisades neighborhood. Eventually, after splitting from his partner, Bob would move on from this residence, and in 2003, he spent $2.9 million on a new home located in the heart of Los Angeles. Bob would call this place home for the rest of his life. Unfortunately, beyond that, there's not much else out there in terms of details about his former abode. As interesting as it would have been to see inside of them, there's only one place we'll ever imagine Bob living, a gorgeous Victorian located at 1709 Broderick Street. You might recognize it. Hey guys, it's Kara, and in honor of Bob Saget, today we're going to take a look at the home that most reminds us of him, famous Full House abode. Don't forget to like, subscribe to Famous Entertainment if you haven't, and follow me on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. This city of San Francisco has some of the coolest and most unique looking homes out of anywhere in North America. Case in point, located over on Steiner Street is what's known as the Victorian Painted Ladies, a series of classic Victorian residences which just might be the most iconic view the city has to offer. Of course, one of the biggest reasons why this stretch is so widely known has a lot to do with Full House. The family home where Danny Tanner lived with his young kids alongside the rest of his extended relations was always portrayed as being a part of that same street. But here's the thing, the real exterior of the home was shot about a mile north of the Painted Lady. In other words, if you want to visit the actual Full House, you'll have to travel to 1709 Broderick Street to discover what was once the most recognizable facade of any American home in the 90s. Of course, the two rooms we got to see the most of during the course of the television series was the living room and the kitchen. Now I hope it doesn't come as a massive shock to many of you when I let you in on a little secret. None of those scenes were shot inside the actual house. Instead, they were all recorded on a sound stage in Los Angeles, but that doesn't make these interiors any less memorable. Whether it was that blue and white plaid couch, the lengthy stair banister, or the ample helping of wooden accessories and finish, no family den felt quite as safe or secure as the Tanner family living room, no matter who was stopping by for a visit. On the other side of the home, the kitchen would continue on with the wood finishing practically everywhere, while also providing the type of cozy family ambiance that could keep anyone distracted, regardless of what craziness was happening at any given moment. All in all, the overall design of the house left such a mark on the subconscious of its fan base that when the series made its eventual return in the 2016 Netflix revival, Fuller House, the interior of the home remained largely the same, with only a few minor cosmetic touches. Of course, in reality, the interior of this home looked nothing like any of these television sets. So why don't we now take a look at the actual inside of the Tanner family home. Originally built at the turn of the 20th century, yes, I'm talking as far back as 1900, this Victorian home was built to span three stories and features over 3,728 square feet of living space. In 2016, the home hit the market and guess who scooped it up? No, not Bob Saget. Instead, it was Jeff Franklin, the creator of the series. At the time, Franklin paid $4 million for the home with the intent of turning it into an exact replica of the series so as to allow fans to visit and 
and walk through the place experiencing the Tanner family home for themselves. Great idea, right? Well, not so fast. It turns out that this project was met with immense criticism from the surrounding neighbors who were already tired of creepers stopping by and taking pics of the exterior of the home for the past few decades. Instead, Franklin simply renovated the home and then placed it back on the market. But even though the house doesn't look like it did on the television series, that doesn't mean it's any less spectacular on the inside. During the recent renovations, the main floor of the home was practically gutted and a living space was added onto the lower level alongside a bedroom, bathroom, den and a wet bar. The home's formerly most recognizable feature, the red front door, has now been painted black and as soon as you step foot through it, you are immediately greeted by the reinvigorated living area that features not only sleek and modern touches throughout, but also a neutral color palette with brass accents. On the opposite side of the main floor, the kitchen boasts deep midnight blue cabinetry as well as some truly classic marble countertop. This area of the home also notably offers up a ton more space than its television counterpart, including a lovely wooden kitchen table all its own. A short walk up that killer main staircase will bring you to the upper floor of the home, it features its very own living space positioned at the top of the stairs, offering enough space for yet another dining table, as well as a gigantic gigantic sectional couch. Also upstairs, the master suite features a built-in fireplace as well as an ensuite bathroom. As for the rest of the bedrooms, well, they're all pretty petite, but they carry on with the trendy neutral color tone of the others. In terms of the exterior, well, if you've ever spent any time in San Francisco, then you know that backyards can be hard to come by. But lo and behold, this lovely family home opens up to a backyard of its very own. The yard contains a gorgeous English garden, even if there still isn't exactly a whole ton of space out there. Upon completing these series of renovations, Franklin never actually moved into the property. Instead, after butting heads with the neighbors, he placed the home on the market for $6 million in 2019. Four months later and there still hadn't been a nibble, so price was cut to $5.75 million. It would take a further year for the home to eventually sell, with a buyer being found in November of 2020 and reportedly spending about $5.3 million on the purchase. So what do all of these renovations and sales mean for fans of Full House? Well, sadly, it seems like America's house has disappeared and now America's dad has followed it. But at the very least, we'll still have clips and old episodes of Full House to remember them both by. While we couldn't check out Bob Saget's real life properties, we got to take a look at the one home that really celebrates his famous character, Danny Tanner. After that house tour, what did you guys think? Full House was one of my favorites as a kid, and I'll never forget how watching him on that series made me feel both safe and secure. Rest easy, Bob, you'll be missed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!